this year, last year, obviously you didn't get to play a ton. So now that you're playing, do you feel a different role? What's your thought process is going into games now as compared to last year? Uh, obviously, I didn't. I haven't got much playing experience yet. Mm -hmm. So this year, I'm just trying to get into my role, do what coach brought me here to do, run the rim, run to the rim, uh, run down the court, box out, block shots, just try and be like a defensive anchor type player and just try and fit into my role. And I, I, I think I'm getting there over time. I'm going to keep going hard in practice and try and get into that role as the season goes on. Could you learn anything last year in watching and practicing? Or is it so much more important to get game experience? I think because last year I tried to watch as much as um, Lodi playing basketball as possible. Just I like the energy he brought to the team. And I think every team needs a person like that, like a glue, a glue guy, an anchor. So I think part of it is paying attention to the seniors, people who have more experience than you. And another part of it is obviously game experience because I'm not used to that type of environment yet, I guess. But just trying to get into that mindset of I'm in a game, I've got spots to be, I've got roles to fill. So I'm just trying to get into that. So, yeah. James, I'm kind of curious. When you signed last year, mm. uh, kind of the word on the street was as you were playing in the red shirt your first year because obviously you, were, you still had a couple of years of high school you, you could have gone to. Mm -hmm. um, but then obviously you end up playing that first year. So I'm just kind of wondering, at, like, at what point did you think, like, maybe, okay, you know, I could do this. Like, you know, maybe it's beneficial if I just go ahead and play my first year. Um, I think last year would have been a lot easier if I didn't get injured because that kind of put a wrench in the works. And at that point, I was just... I didn't really know what was going to happen. I just, I just rode with the punches, I guess. But there wasn't really. Um, after I got injured, it was, it was less clear. But all that matters is I'm, I'm healthy now. I hope to be healthy for the rest of my time at WVU. So <laughs> I hope to, I hope to help the team any way I can now. So it, it seems like you're almost kind of learning under fire this year when, when you go out there. And all of a sudden, you're asked to guard Zach Eady, or yeah. you're asked to guard uh, Nunji, who's you know, another seven footer. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they have the experience. They've been around the block a few times. So what's that experience been like for it's you? It's actually been really, um, really helpful. Like, guarding Eady yeah. was, um, I've gone from not playing my entire first year to guarding a seven foot four, 290 monster. Yeah. So, um, I think just trying to stay locked in, not being too distracted with who I have to guard, just trying to stop the ball and just slow my defensive matchup down as much as I can, like coach wants me to do. And I think just the more I'll play, the more efficient I'll get in that aspect. So, yeah. Eventually you get used to it, right? Eventually, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy's a big kid. He's, he's a big kid. What is it like, seven foot four guy, 290 pounds, I mean, and you're trying to, I mean, you're, you're physically very, very equipped for a lot of things, but yeah. no one's equipped for that. I think it was, it was, it was just a matchup that we just had to stop, and we had, we tried our hardest. But you can't teach seven four two ninety, so it's not a whole lot I could do there. But should we try to stop him? And should we try really hard? So <laughs> James, what, third year in the United States. Third, third so yeah. are, are you adjusted? Are there things about home you miss? Are there things? here that you couldn't get at home that you like? Mm, obviously, I'm always going to miss my family. That's a big part. Um, I got to see my brother um, down at Xavier, which was that was really nice. I only get to see him like once a year out here. But obviously, I'm going to miss my family. But when it comes to basketball, there's, when it comes to like West Virginia, there's nowhere else in America or the UK that could prepare me as much as they have here. Like I came in 218 pounds as a freshman skin and bone, now I'm like 235 pounds, 6'9". I've grown into my frame a lot more, I'm more athletic. So I don't think anywhere else could possibly do that for me. I think Sean Brown's done a wonderful job with me and the rest of the guys, especially Jimmy, but I don't think anybody else has been able to prepare me like they have here, so. How's your game changed too? From last year? When you, when you first got to the United States, when you are in Beckley? I think just, the importance of realizing that every team needs that one like athlete and that one that glue guy that holds everyone together defensively i think i'm equipped for um for defense specifically 
I can box out. I'm pretty strong. I'm pretty athletic. I have pretty good vocal. My stamina is pretty good. Um, and I think if I can just learn how to get to my spots a little bit better and learn how to just run the offense a little bit better and take my scoring opportunities, I think that'll be a, it'll benefit the team. On your scoring opportunities, you've attempted a couple three quarters this year. Is that, is that an area <laughs> that was um? To get to? I assume not, right? Uh, I think that was just more freshman, um, the inner freshman in me. Um, the lack of experience, um, I thought I was open on those threes, so I, so I took them. Um, and I, I guess if it, it was too early in the shot clock, um, those attempts, and I don't think that's what we wanted against the uh, seven foot four Takidi. So I think we could have got a better look out of that. So that's just building game experience and just better habits on court. Did you woke up, uh, got a little bit of home for you. The World Cup, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not looking forward to the, the France matchup. I think we're going to go home. Um, I've, I thought we were going to beat the USA team at least three zero. All of my friends back home were saying, when we when we beat them, you got to let your teammates know. And then we didn't win. <laughs> and then we didn't win. So, yeah. And yeah, Netherlands beat them three nothing. Yeah. James, what was your confidence level heading into the season, and where's it at right now? Heading into the season. Um, that's a great question. I think obviously last year was more of a just a sit back and just take in as much as I can and I feel as if athletically I'm pretty confident like everything I and all the plays and everything coach knows he wants me to do now I think I'm pretty confident I just want to go out there and get as, as much experience as possible so I can try and grow my own on court confidence as well like practice I know what I'm doing play wise if he caught up a player I could probably run a draw up in front of you that's just that's just what I did last year just sit back and just watch all the seniors because we had a lot of old guys last year just watching what they did what got them taken out and I feel as if just when I'm playing it's just going to start clicking quicker and quicker so I can actually like contribute to my team this year so yeah you've also experienced a Big 12 schedule, unlike some of these transfers who have yeah. not played in the Big 12. But mm. what, what are you able to take from that, even though you are still relatively younger compared to some of the other guys on the team? But what, what kind of can you take from last year's experience, just kind of sitting and watching, as you said, into Big 12 play in about a month? You mean from watching or like the five minutes I played in Texas yeah, Tech? The, more the watching. Just the watching, kind of, okay. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say I couldn't get a lot from that five minutes. I wasn't always, I was screwed. But um, I think just it's the people we play now aren't as like in a non-conference schedule. They're not going to be as like athletic. I think that's like the biggest difference. Like the speed of Big 12 players a lot. Like it's a lot more physical. It's a lot harder. It's a lot more grueling on your body. We're in West Virginia, so we've got to travel a lot more as opposed to the Texas teams. And it's just, everything needs to be, everybody needs to be on the same page and everybody needs to be on point with what coach wants us to do. And we are very close to getting there. And I think once once that clicks, we're going to be a monster of a team because we've got we got great pieces on our team, like everyone from Keedy to Jimmy Bell is an absolute monster. Trey scores it whenever he wants. Stevie's a massive bucket. Like we have we have the pieces to be great this year, and I think we will. James, can you can you fill the blanks in on the tennis background? Like, when did you <laughs> um, I want to say I started around six or seven because my older brother played tennis, and then my parents picked it up, and then. Me and my younger brother started playing just because my older brother was playing. And I played for like seven, eight, or I think nine years. And then as I got to like my first year of high, high school in the UK, I just switched to basketball. And that's when I started growing rapidly. So I think I had the tennis is where I got my hand-eye coordination and like footwork from and most of my agility. But... I think it was important that I did that before I started playing basketball because I had the fundamentals before I came in. So, was there uh, in the not AAU and tennis were you like in competitive situations? Is it a high school sport there? I'm not sure how that works. Um, it's kind of like you just enter in tournaments, and there are like certain grades. Like there's red ball, you start when you're younger, orange ball, green ball, and then yellow ball is what the pros play. 
you start that at around like 15, 16, I think. Or it might be 13, it depends. I was tall, so I just went up. Um, it's just, you enter in tournaments, there are like grade one through fives, ones being the highest, and you just try and, I wasn't like seriously competitive, well, seriously competing in like grade ones and twos, because I, I was getting to that point and then I just switched to basketball and, and now I'm here now, so. Um, you're talking about three-point shooting for a guy your, your size, mm. but um, just your exposure to basketball seems to be the time where big guys were stepping outside and taking mm. threes and point forward stuff. Yeah. Um, have you ever looked back at what back to the basket guys used to be like not that long ago and like what a low post player used to be not that long ago? Some of my favorite players are power forwards. Um, like I watch so much film on Kevin Garnett just to see how much like leverage he had in the post. Like the speed that he had at like what six foot eleven was just insane to me. So I just I like watching him a lot. Um, Tim Duncan. It annoys me because I always pick Kevin Garnett over Tim Duncan, and people don't like that for me. But <laughs> it's fine. Um, Dennis Rodman, not no, not so much a scorer, but like again that athletic glue guy that you need on the team. Like rebound the hell out of the ball, run the floor, all that good stuff. I like six foot seven. So some of my favorite players are power forwards. Well, throwback guys, not really like the new age. Say again. So like throwback players, not really like the new age stretch five, stretch fours. That's kind of what you've focused your I'll focus my development on whatever coach needs. So whoever will help us win more games, I'm all for it. If he wants wants me to be a back to the basket big, he wants me to be a two way defender. <laughs> if he wants me to step out and shoot threes, I'll do whatever coach wants for us to win. James, how far do you think you could have taken your tennis? <laughs> think, you, think you could have been a tour player? Uh, <clears throat> I know that's saying a lot, but. Uh... I don't think I'd be me. Um, I think I'd be a lot skinnier if I was a tennis player. I don't think I'd be, my longevity would be that good because there aren't many 6'9 tennis players around. So. Once you're at the net, I mean, it's over. Yeah, it's over with. <laughs> uh, how, how about the serve? How, how hard did you serve? Devastating. Devastating. <laughs> yeah, you can only imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, who was the first person to suggest you'd come to the U.S. for basketball? Was that a hard thought? Of course, your brother was coming over, right? Is yeah. it the same time frame as um, he was coming to college here? My brother introduced me to the American market, mm -hmm. if that's what you're asking. I didn't know. I wasn't aware of coming here. Well, that was an option. I didn't know that was an option. I was just 16, 15, mm -hmm. 14, just playing club basketball. Not professional, just club basketball for my team. Um, I did that for like three or four years, and then on like the third, it was when my brother went to, I think it was the third or second, he went to Iowa, mm -hmm. Iowa Tennis, for Iowa University for tennis. And then I was like, oh, I could get a scholarship, do this. So my, my older brother, Oliver Conco, kind of introduced me to that, that route that I wasn't aware of. But yeah, I actually had um, a teacher in uh, my old school in the UK, first by senior school. Um, he introduced me to basketball um, and he was American mm -hmm. in the in the UK, which I thought was a little bit weird, but <laughs> I thought it was a little bit weird, but he introduced me to um, basketball and he was a big Philly fan. So that's when I was like aware of American basketball, but not so means like getting a scholarship to come to a school like this. How did you get to prep school in Beckley? How did that? Um, it was mainly because ironically because of COVID um, they cut our season short when the COVID outbreak initially hit and we had to quarantine so I just got my um, I had a bunch of clips um, from mom or the parents on our team who would just record the games and then I would record I would take those recordings and then like edit them and put them like into a highlight reel and then I put that onto my YouTube and then my Beckley Prep coach, um, um, Beckley Prep IJN, WV under um, J Tracy Justin Dempsey. He saw that and he reached out to me. And then that was the only opportunity I had to come to the States and I just felt as if I had to take it. And I came to the right state. Uh, <laughs> Hug saw me and it's, it's been wonderful since then, so. When you, you kind of talked about it. Um, when you first decided to, to make basketball your sport, Prior to that, was there much exposure 
to basketball for you? Uh, not in the UK. Not in the UK. Um, I think now it's over the last three years it's gotten a lot better. But from like we don't have AAU. Like when I was in high high school in the UK, there was an AAU. We didn't do travel teams. We just played a game like once a week. It's not. It's like the fifth or sixth most popular popular yeah. sport in the UK, which is outrageous to me. But I think now they're doing a lot better job at like bringing it back up, which is it's good. It would have been useful three years ago, but yeah. Was there a process? I'm kind of wondering because you know it's it's not a popular sport. It's not played very much. Um, you know, there's not a lot of English basketball, you know, role models, role models out there. Mm. So, so the process of taking the sport seriously was that a difficult? I think it was just figuring out how I would do it. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know. All I knew was, um, matter of fact, there's someone I used to play against in the UK. Well, they was in this. He was in a different league to us, and I played against him in France one time because we had um it was like I think it was called the Paris Lions Cup and they had like each one team from each country my team the Reading Rockets we went to France and we played Poland uh, and that's where I played Jeremy Sohan and he just kept popping up he went to Itchen when I was in I think it was my second year of Reading Rockets and then he went from Itchen to Lollamir and then I was like oh so that high school option that's an option I'm looking into that and then he went to, um, I think he went to Germany, and then he went to Baylor, and now he's starting for the Spurs. So I'm like, just watching that, like someone I used to play against, like watch that, like series of events play out. I, I just didn't know it was possible for a UK athlete, but I guess now I know. So. Shows you the path. I guess. Yeah. yeah. So you do a lot of this more on your own. It sounds like. Then. Yeah nobody really cares about basketball in the UK so I kind of had to figure that one out by myself and by the helps of obviously my brother getting into a D1 school so have you ever connected with uh, Tariq Phillip? Tariq Phillip I'm not familiar with Tariq Phillip he used to play with WDU and he competes on the Great Britain uh, national team that's who coach was talking he did, coach was telling me about that last year and I forgot to look into it <laughs> <laughs> oh that's going to be horrible um, I wasn't aware of that um, I don't think I have no. I need to be more social, I guess. <laughs> yes. James, you got held out of a game earlier this year and mm. played in that game. Coach Huggins had a pretty long conversation with you. What was that learning experience like? The one that I didn't play? The Morgan State game? Yeah. Um, it was just, I feel as if I let down my team. That game, I didn't take the warm up seriously. I wasn't locked in, and I think that affected. We were supposed to kill that team by like 40, 50 points. So I don't I don't feel as if... I feel as if me not taking that game seriously affected the team and coach was justified in not playing me. And coach, ex like, he expects that from us to be held, to hold ourselves like self-accountability self and stuff like that. And he was righteous in doing that. And I feel as if... Now I haven't made that mistake again, so <laughs> I think we're good on that aspect. So. Yeah, that was your idea. Yeah, that was my idea. Um, a little, a little bit of both. <laughs> it was um, more like self accountability, and I feel as if me not playing wasn't it wasn't enough, and that was just my way of apologizing to the program, I guess. So. James, um, you mentioned Jimmy a couple of times and other players who had to guard him so that he can get in a role where he's just unstoppable. He scores every time down. Mm. Um, what's it like being the victim of that? The victim is a good, that's a great, <laughs> that's a great analogy. Um, he's like 70 pounds heavier than me. Um, he's really strong and I feel as if me learning how to guard people like that is it's a benefit for me because if I get used to that kind of strength which I'm just still trying to get used to it's been like four months but it's fine um, trying to get used to that strength would be a benefit to me and I think it's a ben it's a benefit for Jimmy too just because they have a lot of people like my type of build in the Big 12 so I think that would be useful for him trying to get into his spots and stuff like that so James thank you All right, appreciate that